السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد الحمد لله غير بسم الله سبحانه وتعالى there was great speakers that came up and gave uh, according to their topic and great uh, speeches were given at this workshop and we spoke about it before and every month these uh, these workshops are taking place whereas we're talking about the rectification of uh, of the heart purification of the heart how can we uh, remove ourselves from this uh, from this worldly life and really connect with uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 how can we uh, how can we connect to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as we know my topic was to talk about the majalis uh, uh, the dhikr the, the the gatherings of dhikr that take place in in groups that take place and and I bought a hadith a great hadith where it talked about the angels that are looking for the uh, for those individual they are conducting and searching and and they out and uh, 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 they being vigilante over uh, over these gatherings are those who sit for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are chanting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala majalis al dhikr and they said and, and in a hadith I mentioned I mentioned before that they they're searching for them that means if you have to search for something there is very unique that there is uh, if, if you have to search for something you, uh, if, if it's something common you could tell a person oh it's right here but for the angels, they are searching for these for these gatherings where the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking place in groups. And as soon as they find, they announce their, their fellow uh, fellow searches, there who are searching as well, hey, we found these gatherings, we found these individuals who are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and chanting la ilaha illallah. And many virtues of la ilaha illallah will go through them as well. And and they would and they start gathering up and they, they start piling up upon something right they start piling up just like we have you know sales on black friday you know everyone is piled up into one store you know snatching things from each other so that's what they're doing as that's what the angels are doing for the uh, for those people who are just sitting they're they're in few we're not in large number we're countable people coming from different backgrounds you know and uh and 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 they're not they're not like you know millions millions of people like we see in uh football stadiums you know basketball stadiums you know and they're not getting that virtue because those are common if it was common if it was speaking of that if the hadith was speaking of that it'd be like those are common it's right there there's a particular stadium for them but for these majalis there's they are very rare only few one masjid in you know queens that takes place Maybe, maybe one or two massages, one or two khanka. They are in my entire New York. They're just taking this, uh, uh, these gatherings. So they pile up, and they say they pile up so much upon each other. They get to the first heaven, to uh, to uh, and all the way till the uh, till the arsh of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is aware what's happening, but just uh, just to make this angel witness. And I mentioned reason he's making them witness because the angels are the one who objected of creation of Adam alayhi salam. Then why are you creating them? Where enough for you to do the dhikr, uh, your dhikr, your remembrance? Why why do you need Adam to uh, worship you and do and you know become a leader on this on this universe? Where enough for you? We follow your command. There's no need for that. Allah subhanahu wa taala rejected them. He said, "You do not know what I know." And just to make them witness that you made an objection, I'm clarifying the objection now. You said that these people will not remember me. They will cause chaos. They will kill each other. They will uh, they will disobey you. But they're the same individual that I've created. Are they're the generation of Adam alayhi salam, and they are remembering me. You know, in solitude they're remembering me, and there's no one forcing them. I'm not forcing them with their own will, with their own choice, and they're coming and remembering Allah subhanahu wa taala. And then the reward that uh, 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 th these these groups of uh, majalis al dhikr are given, each person, the person that is given, Allah SWT tell these angels, you be witness that I have uh, I have given them jannah, and I have forgiven them, I have given them jannah, and I have protected them from what they uh, what they fear of, which is hell. Is I protect them from the hellfire, 
and I have uh, and 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 you know the uh, and that's the reward a person is given me and you are given just for sitting in these gatherings and they're so blessed gatherings that the the, uh, the one of the angels they said that yeah uh, ya Allah there's an individual that is sitting in the back he has he had no intention to sit in this gathering he was just random uh, uh, he had random issue he had random uh, he just came and he just sat uh, sat in the gathering he probably wanted to meet uh, meet one of his friends. He had no intention to sit and do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He might, might not be doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's just sitting there with these individuals. And they make the objection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, even that person is forgiven. Even that person is forgiven, he has, he has gained the same reward the person who is doing the dhikr. Just because that he's attached, just like you know, Imam Khurram Shahzad sahab had mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, the suhba just because of the suhba of these uh, of these individual those who are doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even that person is forgiven because of the mercy that is descended upon to them and is sprayed upon to him as well is sprinkled upon to him as well and another hadith of the Prophet sallam comes he's with the sahaba, uh, sahaba and he said he said when you pass by the, the gardens of Jannah he said eat from it grace from it you know feast from it Sahaba, they were shocked. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what are the gardens of Jannah? And because it, was, it wasn't common, is it? He all of a sudden said, if you, if you pass by the gardens of Jannah, grace from it and eat from it. So the Sahaba, they were shocked. You know, if I tell you, hey, if you go pass by gardens of Jannah, you're like, what are the gardens of Jannah? Are you talking about the uh, store called pa uh, Palace or something? You know, or Paradise? You know something, and they said, "What are those? Uh, what are the gardens of Jannah?" He said, "Those are." Uh, he said, uh, he, "He said the peop uh, people. of he's a groups of people, zikr majalis, people, people who are sitting in uh, in in uh, in the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." He said, "When you see them, sit with them." And that was ordered by Ras uh, it was uh, ordered by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to Rasulullah Sallam. One time, he was passing by the groups of Sahaba who were just sitting. And doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were chanting La ilaha illallah. And he came and sat down with them. The sahaba, they became quiet. And, and they thought we're doing something, something uh, that is not normal. So Rasulullah said, continue doing your dhikr. They continue doing the dhikr. And more or less, uh, 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 Rasulullah saw the, saw the confusion in the face of sahaba. That they might be confused that I'm, I came here to stop them. He said, no, I have been ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, in your gatherings with Rasulullah sallam, as we know, he was busy with so many, so many tasks, so many, uh, uh, so many projects. He wasn't just, he wasn't just, he wasn't just a, a mentor. He was a general. He was a president. He was a teacher. He, he had all these qualities he's doing throughout the day. And he's a husband. You know, he's a father. He's fulfilling all these requirements. But Allah SWT has ordered them to sit with these poor Sahaba who are just saying La ilaha illallah. See, they became confused. He said, No, I have been ordered to sit with you. So that these are the these are uh, these are the gardens of Jannah, with, where Rasulullah SAW ordered the Sahaba to grace from it, eat from it. If you see any one of them, sit with uh, sit in them. And it comes in, it comes in a hadith that uh, Isa alayhi salam he uh, uh, he uh, he said more or less that. On the day of judgment, the most heaviest deeds uh, uh, the, the group of people that would have would be from, from the ummah, uh, Ummat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They would have the heaviest deeds and they would outweigh the scales and compare to the other nations. And reason is because La ilaha illallah is very easy for them. Reason is because they say La ilaha illallah continuously and it's very easy for them compared to the other nations uh, of other prophets. And, and, and this is the reward that is given. And comes, in, uh, comes another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He says, Shall I not tell you something that is better than giving, uh, giving gold and silver in path of Allah? It's better than going in path of Allah, that you, you, you're fighting your enemy. It's better than jihad, better than uh, charity. And, 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 he, and the Sahaba, they said, of course, tell us what it is. He said, Dhikrullah, he said, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, uh, one time Rasulullah sallallahu was sitting, one person came with dressed uh, one, of, uh, one, of the, one of the leader of one of the tribe from, uh, from the village. And he comes and he starts mocking Rasulullah sallallahu in front of the Sahaba. 
So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi out of anger, uh, stood up and grabbed hold of him. And, and he said, you look foolish with your dress. You know, uh, you look foolish with your dress. And, and before he sat down and he said, no, before no, uh, uh, Nuh alayhi salam pa uh, was passing away, he called two of his son and he said, I will warn you of two things and, uh, and advise you of two. And he said, one thing, I, uh, that, uh, two things that I warn you of is do not commit shirk against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not be arrogant. Right? This is what this is what is taught in Khanqa, this is what is taught in this workshop. It's not to be arrogant, it's to humble yourself to the lowest of lowest in the uh, person that uh, that you are. And and he said the two things that I that I uh, that I recommend you. He said La, he said, hold on to La ilaha illallah and he and he gave the virtue and the way of La ilaha illallah. He said that if you take the entire universe and put it onto one, uh, one side of the scale, if there's uh, one side of the scale, and you just put the letters, uh, letter that it just says La ilaha illallah, it has no uh, physical, uh, f physical object of it, just a letter, just on a paper it says La ilaha illallah, you put it onto the other side of the scale, it, say, I, it would outweigh. And if you take that letter, uh, and it continues to say that if you were to take that paper where it says La ilaha illallah, put it onto, uh, onto the universe, it will crush and clump, uh, uh, crumble and turn into dust. That's how heavy La ilaha illallah is. And he said, and he, he's in, he's, and he said, uh, he says, hold on to Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi is is the dhikr, is a supplication of all creation, everything that you see in this universe, the insect, the the uh, the leaves, the the plant plantations, anything that you see, the water, everything, they they, they continue saying Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. This is the dhikr, and the dhikr of the angels as well, and. And, and, and there's a dhikr, and he says this is the sustenance. Dhikr, uh, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is compared to your sustenance, your nut uh, nutrition. Just like we eat food, you know, we have d uh, different diets, right? Person who eats, uh, eats a pure food, good food, his health is good, his physique is good, he feels good. So the dhikr is the same way, is a nutrient for your, uh, for your spirit, for your soul. That if you if if you give if you give more of it, if you get pure of it, if you get good of it, you feel be, uh, you you will feel benefit of it in the spiritually. So he says it gives sustenance to the entire uh, entire universe. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And many virtues have been mentioned, and uh, many virtues are mentioned. As a person who says La ilaha illallah before passing away. He said that there's no, there's no reckoning for the individual. And it, it, the hadith of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu said, hold on to la ilaha illallah and astaghfar. He said, shaitan, he, he, uh, shaitan, he, he made a promise. He said, I misguide a person from, uh, 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 I, made, I make him commit sins. He said, I make him commit sins, but he starts doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, la ilaha illallah, he does astaghfar. He said, once he, do, once he does this, I indulge him in ibadah. I tell him, hey, why don't you pray? Why don't you pray Tahajjud Salah? He said, when he starts praying Tahajjud Salah, I divert his mind saying that, oh, you're, you're on the right path. You're on the right path because his intention gets, uh, gets interpreted by, by shaitan. Get, his intention gets messed up. So this is, this is the power of dhikr. Even shaitan, what he does, instead of making you commit to a sin, he makes you do ibadah. Once you do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so, so uh, this is his workshop to help us uh, connect ourselves with, uh, with the inner reality, the inner, uh, inner pu uh, purification of the heart to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Shaykh Zakir Rahimullah had mentioned Fazal uh, Amal, uh, uh, the commentary of Imam Bukhari Rahimullah, the, there is this, uh, he, mentioned, he broke it down into uh, three categories that uh, how can we improve ourselves in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the third, I'll mention the third category that he mentioned, there's about 70, 80 some uh, 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 parts as he had mentioned. In the th uh, uh, third category he mentioned the most basic, basic is, and that's what we're doing, is the remembrance of Allah, is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we start the per when, when a person who comes, uh, comes to a shaykh and he starts his, uh, his journey in purification of his heart, First thing the Shaykh uh, prescribes him is the dhikr of Allah, which is La ilaha illallah. 
and it's the second thing is recitation of Quran, and then with, uh, and the third thing is the uh, and of course when La ilaha illallah comes uh, uh, comes uh, salatu wasalam drood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these are the three basic dhikr that begin uh, the person who's beginning in this journey. So may, may Allah allow us uh, to uh, to benefit from these uh, from these workshop and allow us to connect with Allah subhanahu wa taala and purify our heart and purify our souls. Wa alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.